Okay, in this video, I'm going to go over writing the chemical names for ionic compounds. And you should remember that an ionic compound is made from a metal bonded to a nonmetal. And in this case, it's very important to remember that because they're ionic compounds, we do not use the numerical prefixes such as mono, di, tri, tetra, hepta, all those kinds of things. Those are only used in covalent compounds. So we have ionic compounds, no numerical prefixes. I think it's a good idea just to have maybe have your periodic table out. We won't use it as much in this video as we might in the writing chemical formulas, but it's just good to know, you know, if, you, if uh, you're on the uh, where, where your metals and nonmetals are, and get an idea about where the charges are in case you want to look something up. Okay, so let's go on and do a few. There are kind of three situations again we have to consider. We have the binary ionic compounds, which are kind of the regular ionic compounds. There's the polyatomics, which have polyatomics, so you need to know the name of the polyatomic ions. And then there's a transition metal. It's important to transmission metal because the charge on the metal has to be written as a Roman numeral directly after the name of the metal. Okay? So let's go through and do a few. All right, these are just our regular ionic compounds, our binary ionic compounds. Whenever we write the name of the compound, we just write the name of the first element as it appears on the periodic table, just the regular name. Lithium, now it's not dilithium because again this is ionic, so we're not using the prefixes. And this is sulfur, is the second element in this compound, and we don't write actually the word sulfur. What we're going to write is, oops, that's an S L U F. We don't write sulfur, we write sulfide. So the general rule for naming ionic compounds is you write the name of the first element just as it appears in the periodic table, and then the second element is going to be have kind of the last syllable taken off and an I added to the end. So this is sulfur, but we don't write sulfur, we write sulfite. Okay, so here we have another ionic compound. Again, we're not using numerical prefixes because this is ionic. This is aluminum, so we just write that down. Okay, and then we have oxygen, and we want to write down that this is not oxygen, but it's oxide, aluminum oxide. So again, it has the I on the end just like this one has the eyed on the end, and that's how we write them. Name of the metal, name of the uh, non-metal with the eyed on the end. Okay, let's erase that. Let's go on to the next slide, and we can go to green. Now this time we have our polyatomic ions. You need to just kind of recognize what ions are polyatomic ions. We have our single metal, and then we have more than one uh, element here, more than one kind of atom as our anion, and that's kind of your hint. You just have to be familiar with the polyatomics. I wrote some of them down here. Carbonate, phosphate, sulfate, uh, hydroxide, and nitrate. You just need to know the names of them, be able to recognize them. But this, again, is just sodium. We just write the name down. And then the carbonate, we don't change it to ide. We just write down the name of the polyatomic ion. So you just use the regular, the full name of the polyatomic ion. So this is carbonate, and that is sodium carbonate. Okay, we do the same thing for this one. This is magnesium. We just write down magnesium. Oopsie daisy. That says magnesium, and then you need to know that this is a hydroxide. Okay, and I think you have to kind of memorize some of those things depending on how your teacher wants you to know those, whether they give you a chart or they want you to memorize them but this is hydroxide, so that's just magnesium hydroxide. Okay, so we put down the name of the metal and the full name of the polyatomic ion. All right, erase those. Okay, now these are a little tricky. I want to spend a little more time on these are transition metals, and the name of the metal is right here. This is nickel, so I'm actually just going to write down nickel. I'm going to put down nickel. Just write down the name of the metal. Now, in order to designate the kind of nickel, because these are transition metals and they can form more than one charge, one, one kind of charge, we're going to have to figure out what the charge is on the nickel, all right? And in this case, we can use the what we call the reverse crossover rule. You can see there's <clears throat> two nickels and three carbonates. We can just take the three from the carbonate, saying that there's three carbonates, and we know that that tells us the charge on the nickel. Okay, and if you think about what the crossover rule, were, how it works, and you can see that that would be the charge on the nickel. Okay, so we put down nickel three, Roman numeral three, and then we just put down carbonate. We don't put down the charge for the carbonate or anything like that. So this is just nickel three carbonate. All right. Now the next one is iron. So I'm just going to write down the name of the metal because we always just write down the name of the metal, and I'm going to use the reverse crossover rule 
I know using the reverse crossover rule, if you think about it again, this is a plus two. So the iron has a plus two charge because that's how many oxygens we have. Remember, we bring the charge over number over to write the formula for the oxygen, but now we can just put it back and that's the charge. And it's nickel two, and this is oxide. Okay, so that's how we, 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 we do those two. The next two are a little different, but if you have more than one metal and more than one anion, more than one cation, and more than one anion, then you can use the reverse crossover rule. Just take the number of oxygens, make it the charge of the iron. The number of carbonates, make it the charge on the nickel. All right, now in this case, they're a little different. We have one of each. We only, in this case, we only have one metal. In this case, we only have one metal. We can't simply use the reverse crossover rule. We have to make the overall charge on this molecule has to be zero. And that's the same for all of them, but we have to use a little more systematic uh, process here. The charge on the sulfur, we can look up, is minus two. Well, if the overall charge is going to be zero, and there's only one lead, that means the charge on the lead has to be plus two. And you can see plus two plus a minus two equals zero. So this one is just lead, and it's lead two, one, two, and it's sulfide. All right? So we had to do that because we only had one metal. In these, we had more than one metal. In these, we had more than one metal. And we can use the reverse crossover rule. Here, we only have one metal. Now, let's try the same thing for this one. Now, we know that this is manganese, and the oxygen has a minus 2. But there's two of them. So that means the overall charge on the oxygen is minus 4 because there's two of them. Well, we, again, the overall charge on the whole molecule has to be 0. Well, therefore, what must the charge be on the manganese? The charge on the manganese must be plus 4. Plus 4 plus minus 4 equals 0. So let's see if I can fit this in here. Manganese, and I'm going to put Roman numeral 4, and then I'm just going to write down here oxide. Okay? So it's a little more math, a little more, you can't just do the reverse crossover, you got to think about it a little more. In this case, sulfur is minus 2, 1 lead, plus 2. In this case, oxygen is minus 2, but we have two of them, so that makes the total charge on the oxygen, you know, part of that molecule, on the part of that uh, ionic system there to be minus 4, so therefore the manganese must be plus 4 because we only have one manganese. All right? So I think that's it. Once we did, once again, it's just write down the, the, the metal and then put down the anion depending on if it's carbonate or a polyatomic or an ide and an ide and an ide. Okay? So I think that covers it. I think that's all three kinds. I think that's the end of it. I hope that was helpful. If uh, you have any comments, please leave your comments in the comment section below.